Hi everyone, I'm Russell, and you are watching the Dangerous Fishbowl channel. This is a composition entitled Riparian Oasis, which is my second entry into the 2015 Aquatic Gardeners Association competition. So as the name suggests, this is supposed to represent a lush river environment. So toward that goal, we have a little bit of a elevated bank on the left, and then as you descend toward the right, we have what would be mid-river basically, and the elevation difference is about 10 centimeters. Now, obviously, this would be a very small river, but you can imagine this is only one part of a large extended bank. So in any event, um, this is an eco-aquarium. And if you're not familiar with an eco-aquarium, I have that whole concept outlined in another specialized video, which is linked in the description. So essentially, it means there's a minimum of technology uh, beyond what is absolutely necessary. So there's no mechanical filtration. There's no carbon dioxide. Yes, all that plant growth is just by virtue of the CO2 emitted by the fish and the, and the nutrients that, that they put out. And, uh, and there's, there's, no, there's no artificial fertilizers of any kind. So all I've got on this is a 125 gallon per hour Jibo power head, which is pumping out a lot of air, as you can see on the left. And by the way, that's far in excess of what I actually need to keep the fish alive and healthy in this tank. Um, but I, I do it at that level of strength because I want this to look like a genuine riparian environment, right? Where we'd have some kind of uh, churning action uh, at the bank. Um, and, and furthermore, I, I have Burmese hillstream loaches in here, which uh, I'll show you in a few minutes if they're willing to come out on camera. And they do like a, a very strong current with a, an enormous amount of aeration. So that's for their benefit as well. Now, obviously the central feature here is the tiger barbs. And uh, as you can see, if you look closely, they actually have some interesting genetic diversity amongst themselves. But uh, so they, they pretty much unify the, the entire composition. But of course, I've got my maintenance crew. I've got Jordanella Floridae, if they manage to come out at some point. They're my, my flag fish. Oh, there they are up on the left. You can see them right by the power head. Um, I have a Siamese algae eater in here as well to, to help with uh, whatever the flag fish don't pick up. Um, and then, of course, the hillstream loaches. And apart from that, it's a pretty straightforward tank. Um, the grassy kind of plant on the bottom is my, my very favorite Echinodurus tenellus, pygmy chainsword. Then you can see I've got a little bit of java fern uh, on the right side of the driftwood there, the little root. Um, and by the way, I found that root, just uh, somebody discarded it at the side of the road, I, I guess after doing yard work. So you never, you never know what kind of gems you can find, you know, just, just in your immediate environment, even if you live in a fairly urban area. Um, and so front and center, of course, we have pennywort growing all over the place. Oh, there's one of the Burmese hillstream loaches. He's kind of on the left toward the lilies. And then, of course, on the left, there are, in fact, these red lilies. Uh, and I love those uh, because they, they just add a very different kind of, uh, kind of color and, and shape to the aquarium that you wouldn't normally associate uh, with aquatic plants. And, of course, they, they spread out on the surface. But that's also a bad thing because they can block a lot of light. So I've, I've actually cut back a lot of the... A lot of the leaves, but I, I like their unique form and, and the color that they add. Um, so, and by the way, as you can see, if you look at the driftwood, um, there's actually some Echinodorus tenellus growing in a hole in the driftwood, and I explained how I how I do this in one of my other videos. But uh, basically, I, I put a little bit of gravel in that hole, and I, I put a little bit of vitamin pill, and I just stuck a tenellus in there, and it just absolutely took off. So I'm really pleased with it with the growth that that's uh, afforded. And what it, what it does is it forms this like cascade, almost a waterfall, if you will, of, of uh, tenellus grass uh, that then spreads all over the bottom. It's, it's, really, it's really a beautiful thing. Um, by the way, uh, I haven't mentioned, this tank is a really interesting form factor. So this is called an Aquion widescreen. And it's called that because it's kind of like a widescreen television. It's about 76 centimeters wide. Uh, about 42 centimeters high, but it's only 21 centimeters front to back. So it's a very narrow tank, which makes it ideally suited for tight conditions, you know, up against the wall on a bookshelf, or, or as I have it actually on my breakfast table. So I can sit down and eat a meal here and just absolutely enjoy this beautiful piece of nature that I, that I find here next to me. It's, it's, just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful feeling to see that every day. And it's, it's not something that costs a lot of time, money, and effort to maintain. It certainly, it certainly was a, a major effort to get it stabilized. You know, you have to deal with algae and all the rest of it while you're trying to balance things out. But it's really come to a nice balance. Um, this, this tank has been set up for about four months now. So it's just really come into its own. Um, and, I, and I'm happy what's happened with it. 
And by the way, I, I was trying to put in some nice red crypts. You can sort of see it in, in the center. There's a, a crypt leaf there, but uh, the Tanellas just totally took over. So, you know, sometimes as an aquascaper, um, some, some vision that I have for the tank doesn't quite come out the way I want it to come out. Um, and, and the way I look at that is as long as everything's in balance and it looks good, if nature took over and, and did something else that's really crazy and wild, you know what, I, I tend to back off. I, I don't interfere much um, unless things are really wild and overgrown. So it's nice sometimes to see you know, how your tank can innovate itself as it were. And you can just kind of sit back and sort of passively nudge it in one direction or the other. But you know, don't try to micromanage your tank. Um, let, let it be, you know, let, it, let it become what it wants to be. Um, so let me take you for a three-dimensional tour of this. Oh, and by the way, if you want a, an, an actual like hour of just looking at the tank and watching the fish, I'm going to post a, a link to that in the description as well. So that'll be a video just on Riparian Oasis as a composition, uh, as opposed to the technical video, which is this one. But uh, so as you can see, I've set this up. I've got some LED lamps at each side. Now, I, I don't normally leave them there. I've left them there because when I show you under the lighting hood, I need some additional light. So we'll leave them there for now. Uh, this just kind of gives you an idea, a little bit better idea what's going on. Let's see if I can find that beautiful hill stream loach. There he is. There he is, a beautiful, beautiful Burmese hill stream loach. He's got kind of a, a, kind of a speckled appearance, as you can see. I just love that. So let me show you what's going on. Um, so this is a beams work, what is it, 30 inch, you know, 75 cm beams work, um, LED, you know, this is a five row LED. Back there, I, I've just got kind of a clip, a uh, little foam clip, which is holding the power cable for the power head. And then you can also see the cable for the beams work. And then I've got this airline here. And the airline, let me, let me just show you this if I can. Um, the airline just sits behind the tank and it's got this little adjustable thing. So you can, you can kind of turn it up and down. Uh, obviously, I've got it prank, cranked pretty high at the moment. Um, and then this is this is just an electrical cord that goes behind the tank. But you can see, look, I mean, there's no there's no nothing. There's no supplemental CO2. There's no mechanical filtration. Nothing like that. So um, if it's possible, I'm going to remove this light. Oh, before I do, notice by the way, this is a shade bar here, which I've presented in uh, my Eco Aquarium video. So I got the electrical tape sealed over it, and I got the uh, painted wood right here, so you don't you don't get lasered in the eyes by bright light when you're when you're looking straight at it but um, let's go ahead and flip this off I'm gonna pull this off the top of my tank with one hand which is highly inadvisable and see if I can actually manage to show you what's going on here we go all right so you can see the power head trust me it's under there somewhere it's buried in pennywort Okay, and then you have your lily pads here. And again, you don't, you don't want them to crowd out the surface, which they will do, because everybody else needs light as well. So I, I do trim them back. You can see some budding lily, pad, uh, lily pads in the bottom there. And you can well imagine, you know, it might look like this if you actually were hiking out in nature somewhere and just looked into a stream, you know, and you saw these, these kind of flooded roots or whatever. Um, it's, just, it's just a really, a really wonderful sight uh, to have on your table. So that's it. Like I said, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's just, just what I need when I wake up in the morning and I have to get my head together for work. I can just look at this for a moment and it just, it just fills me with a sense of peace. So, uh, definitely be sure to see the, uh, composition video as it were. And, um, thanks for watching.